Dear viewers, welcome to One Exclusive. I'm your host, Alna. Every week, we try and bring you the hottest social issues from an alternative point of view. Be it politicians, celebrities, activists, or the man on the street, we make sure that we bring their unique voice to your living room. Polygamy is on everyone's lips, following a deadlock in Parliament over the vagueness of the President's ability to have more than one wife. Senior members of Parliament have recently expressed their favour for polygamy as an answer to gender-based violence. But does polygamy still have a place in our modern society? We speak to woman rights worker Lizette Ferris. In studio with us we have Lizette Ferris, woman and child rights activist. Welcome Lizette. Thank you for having me, Elna. Um, Lizette, as you and our audience may or may not know, there was an uproar in Parliament last week about a legal definition that gives our president the right to have more than one wife. Now, I know last year in November, our very own Minister of Gender Equality and Child Welfare, uh, Doreen Sioka, said that she believes polygamy could cure gender-based violence. Um, is polygamy in our modern day context still applicable? What, what, what are your indications on it? Well, I think we need to go back and to see why was polygamy instituted in the first place. And there were three crucial reasons, um, Alna, why we needed a polygamy. And one of them was a lack of males. Um, we also know that if a country is disease prone, um, the females are more likely to choose a male with more, um, they call it uh, physical attributes, to be able to sort of deter the, the genes in the baby um, um, and therefore be able to resist diseases and illnesses. Um, and of course, the third reason is also because of economy. So uh, females fare better sharing the economic resources of a male than they have if they go with a poorer male, for example. So if we look at those three predominant reasons mm. um, and equate them to the situation in Namibia, then personally I feel there's no need for us to, to um, practice polygamy anymore because one, we have a ratio, national gender ratio of 52 females to 48 males. So that's almost, you know, 50-50 um, balance. Uh, we also have a lot of women that are empowered um, that we can see are actually the breadwinners mm. in families. Mm. So um, the reason to marry for economic reasons are not there anymore. Mm. <clears throat> and thirdly, we have a very safe country in mm. terms of disease. I mean, the only challenge that we still have is HIV, AIDS and TB. Mm -hmm. um, but both these have been mm. uh, counteracted by uh, product, uh, um, health within our health system. So mm. for me, particularly, there is no reason why we should still be practicing polygamous uh, marriages, mm. except the part that it is part of our culture, of course. Mm. Okay, just to interrupt you there, so there are benefits to polygamy and traditionally it has been practiced. Yeah. Um, it gives women safety economically and I also realized that perhaps within the home decision-making power, um, it balances that somewhat. Perhaps if they're more than one wife, you know, contracting a man's decision-making, one, one doesn't know. But my yeah. question is, as far as particularly addressing gender-based violence, um, is polygamy beneficial or is it harmful? Um, I believe that it's harmful um, for several reasons. First of all, if we look at um, sort of the message that we are sending with polygamy, um, it's that men are superior to women, therefore one man can have more than one woman. So mm -hmm. already we are saying there's inequality between the sexes and of course we are moving away from what our constitution and other relevant laws are saying about equality in Namibia. Uh, so of course it, it brings about the discrimina gender discrimination as well because we now say that you know what one man can have three women um, and, but women can't have the same benefits so um, I totally agree with Margaret mm -hmm. Mensah in where she's saying that if this laws law applies to men then we should also have polyandry which mm -hmm. is the practice of uh, one has uh, one wife mm -hmm. with several husbands but, so but to be realistic I mean as far as, as far as polyandry is concerned it's not something that we've seen very regularly in our own cultures um, so I guess the question is again are women more prone to gender-based violence or to be being victims um, in a polygamous relationship or not? 
Yes, definitely they are. And again, um, you know, when we talk about GBSV, gender-based and sexual violence, we're really looking at some of the root causes, which is inequality. Um, and this brings about a disparity in power. So say, for example, um, we know that in, in our patriarchal society, which we still have pretty much, and, and polygamy is a practice of patriarchy, uh, we know that the male is the primary power and decision maker. Mm -hmm. He's a primary power holder and decision maker. And they Therefore, if we, for example, reverted to say, uh, let's practice polyhandry, which I also see can't really happen in Namibia, but then we would be giving the female the mm. primary power. Um, and again, we're not really moving into a gender equality society. So what we are saying really is that we need to look at GBSV from its root causes and polygamy and all of these other things are contributors but are not the root causes. Our root cause of GSB, uh, GBSV is gender inequality which is driven by gender discrimination. You know in, in all of our societies, government, law enforcers, service providers, media, mm. um, businesses, everybody keeps telling a woman you are an object and keeps telling the man you are the decision maker. You know so and many a times we also find that even in, in the discussion on paternity tests mm. you know it came about that again women are to blame because now they are lying about who the yeah. fathers are and many a time society puts so much pressure on women mm. and so much responsibility yet they allocate all the privileges mm. to men so this is the disparities so, that we need to look so at. So you say in other words that uh, polygamy as it's practiced today not polyandry because mm. we know that that's not very likely to happen um, is not empowering the woman no. and as far as we're concerned gender-based violence will not be addressed sufficiently if we don't start empowering the woman. That is, that is the basis but what we need to do is to bring equality and practice equality across uh, the sexes. You know when we look at Ministry of Gender our, our um, custodians of, of, of certain policies and, and what they send out, the messages that they send out, it contradicts mm. the agenda for, for attaining gender equality. So what I'm trying to get at is that sometimes our messaging is not the same as mm. what our policies should be saying, for example. Mm. And also if we look at sort of um, polygamous marriages in Namibia, we've got about 12.5% or 12% as a, a, a surveyed, reviewed in 2000 by the Ministry of Health and Social Services. Mm. So at the moment, 12% of our marriages are polygamous. Mm -hmm. and they are mostly in the rural areas, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the correlation between GBSV and, and these, you will find that there is a link, but we mm -hmm. can't really say that it's in polygamous marriages you experience uh, gender-based violence more than you would mm -hmm. in a... Um, so those statistics aren't clear. We can't say the one favors you know, is more likely to become a victim than the other. Th than the other one. Okay, but I think polygamy, the mm. whole debate around polygamy yes. is definitely a contributing factor because this is again sort of telling men you are more superior, mm. therefore you are entitled mm. to more women. So, so as opposed to focusing on polygamy and legalizing it, we should reshift our focus. Definitely on so, how do we make this yeah. gender uh, equal for both and how mm. do we get to a position where we can say we have gender equity, mm. you know, the value that both genders are bringing are the same. And if we look at Namibia, I think there are indications that women bring as much to the table as men mm -hmm. most of the time. However, women are still a vulnerable population and therefore we need to be uh, put protected effectively, you know, uh, when it comes to sort of physical um, and, and other powers that men have over women. And I also think, um, Alna, that if we look at uh, the message that we're saying is, uh, you know, when, when uh, Honorable Doreen Sioka said that polygamy is the answer to GBSV, mm -hmm. I would like to ask myself, what is the message that we're sending here? Mm -hmm. um, what, is, what are we saying in this instance that women should accept polygamy so that they can be safe in their homes and in their countries? Mm -hmm. And I think this goes against everything that we've worked for um, in the past sort of 26 years uh, since independence to try and achieve gender equality. So if we go on to these debates, and they are very sensitive, mm -hmm. of course, you know, because it's cultural influences and a lot of other things. But if we go into these debates, we need to make sure that we are sending the right messages. messages and we're being critical. And we're being critical right. of them, yeah. So um, just on a final word, just to sum it up, if you have a word of advice, particularly to our parliamentarians, our lawmakers, the leaders who have the public voice, um, how, how would we go by addressing this issue? Um, well, I think, first of all, we need to do away with a fluff. 
and the talk shops mm. and actually start implementation. And the first one on there is for GBSV, for it to have escalated to 45 cases a day being reported. And we also know that many are not reported. So this is just a small indication of what mm. we're dealing with. Um, but if we look at that problem, then we can see that, you know, the services provided mm. and the care that should be there is not adequately provided in accordance with our laws. So say, for example, we know that perpetrators are not arrested, detained, prosecuted on a timely fashion. We know that survivors and victims of, of uh, violent crimes have been uh, uh, victimized um, mm -hmm. looking for help. You know, mm -hmm. what have you done? Why are you wearing that short skirt? You asked to be raped mm -hmm. and things like that. And blame so shifting. Yeah. Blame shifting, yeah. 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 And, and th these are all sort of contributing factors because subliminal messaging is mm -hmm. so, so vital. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. we're saying here is, Guys, we know that uh, GBSV is a, is a national concern. Mm. However, at the same time, ach, don't worry, we won't prosecute you. Your docket will get mm. lost. Mm. The woman will be under protection orders mm. and the men will not be um, sort of intimidated mm. Mm. enough to stay away from that yeah. woman. They kill yeah. women under protection orders. We know that children who come into conflict with the law, for example, are detained with, with adult mm. men where mm. a lot of violent, um, you know, violations are actually happening against mm. these young youngsters as well. And uh, this is perpetuated. Yeah. Of, yeah. of the violent crimes. So just to stop you there, our time has unfortunately run out. Thank you very much for coming. And just to sum up what you've said now, so we're the verdict still out on polygamy. Mm -hmm. There are benefits, but at this stage, according to you, it's not a priority. No. And legalizing it won't help. No. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. If you have any comments or anything to say about tonight's topic, SMS your comments to 555.